Okay then, so we're outputting all of our data on this homepage right now. Now I like to start adding a few styles to our components to make it look a bit better because currently it looks pants. So there's multiple options when it comes to adding CSS. We could use global styles, which is what we're using for the overall look of the website. You know, the background, the title, and the footer down here as well. But really, I only put styles in that file if they're global for every page. Another option is CSS modules, and I cover those in my next JS crash course. So I'm going to use the third option in this one, which is styled JSX. And basically, all that means is we can add styles into our JSX templates. So for example, if I go to the index component right here, what I can do is add inside the root elements down here, a style tag like so. Now all I have to do is add in a JSX attribute right here. And then when we come to make the styles, we need curly braces and then a template string. So back ticks right there found below the escape key on my keyboard. And then we can just add normal CSS inside here. So if I were to create a class selector, I can do, I could say dot recipe hyphen list like so, and that's going to grab this thing right here, this div, and I could style that. So I'm going to say display this as grid, for example, and then we'll give this grid hyphen template hyphen columns of one fraction, one fraction. That basically means split up the available space horizontally into two columns and each column shares an equal fraction, one fraction each, right? And then we want a gap between each item in the grid. So we'll say grid hyphen gap and this applies vertically and horizontally and we'll say 20 pixels top and bottom. So between the elements above and below each other and then 60 pixels horizontally. Okay. So if I save this now and preview, we should see that looks a bit better already. Now these are displaying in a grid. And the good thing about style JSX is that if we inspect this and take a look at the classes, let me just move this down a little bit if I can. All right, so if we come up here, you see this recipe list, we've added this extra class right here. And what that does is essentially scope the styles to this component only. So if I used a recipe list elsewhere in the project, in a different page, for example, these styles would not apply to them. They only apply to the recipe list inside the component where we make the styled JSX. So that's pretty good. It scopes them automatically for us. All right. So now we've done that. I also want to add some styles to the recipe card component right here. So inside the root component, again, at the bottom, I'm going to create a style tag. We need to add in the JSX attribute, and then we need curly braces and then back ticks. And inside this, we can create our styles. Now there's a few in here and I don't want to write all of these out from scratch because again, this is not a CSS course, but I'm just going to paste them in and I got these from my repo. So if you want to grab them as well, you can do, you can just get them from the lesson six branch right here on this repo. Remember the link to this is down below. Okay. So let me just quickly walk you through these. So this right here, this is the card. And what we do is basically rotate that a little bit only by one degrees. And it just kind of tilts the card and it gives it a bit of an edgy look, at least I think. So let me just uh, save this and show you. Um, you can see the kind of tilted to one side. All right. So that's all that does. So down here we have the content inside the card, this thing right here. And we give that a background of white, a bit of a box shadow. We take away the margin. We say position relative, just so we can bring it up a little bit over the image itself. You can see how it overlaps the image. That's because we positioned it relative and moved it up a little bit relative to its original position and to the left a little bit as well. The info, which is this stuff right here, the title and the cooking time, we just give that a bit of padding. The H4 inside info, we give it margin top and bottom and we say uppercase. Then for the paragraph tag, which is the cooking time, we take away the margin and we make it kind of like a medium gray color, which is this thing right here. Okay, so the actions. These are the things that sit at the bottom and inside that we have a link. So we say for the actions, margin top 20 pixels, display as flex and justify content flex end, meaning they go to the right over here. So for each individual action, for each anchor tag, if you like, 
we have a color of text of white, a background of kind of like a ready color, a bit of padding and a text decoration of none. So pretty simple styles to be honest and I just think it makes it look a little bit better. All right, so that is the homepage pretty much done now. We're listing all the different recipes we have from Contentful and we're outputting all of the data. We output the image, the thumbnail, the title, the amount of time it takes to cook and also this button right here. Now, if we click on this, it goes to the address of that particular recipe and each one of these are different dependent on the slug of that recipe, but we still see the same content on this page right here. So what we need to do is basically generate paths or tell Next.js to generate paths for each recipe that we have. So that means create a static page for each recipe so that when we go to that path, it's got a static page just for that recipe. And then inside that, we can show the data for that single recipe. Now to do this, we're going to be using a function called get static paths. So we'll do that next.